Hello world, this is a presentation on a virtual reality rig design for the year of 2014. I am the design's primary developer, Marcus Stoll, and I hope you'll get something out of this video to further the road paved to virtual reality. This is the first of two videos created for explaining the virtual reality rig that I have envisioned for this year. In this video, I'll be covering the parts needed to make this rig a reality. In the second, I'll explain the implementations of these parts. I admit that the second part of this little series will probably be the most useful to those of you with a firm grasp of the items I'll be discussing, so click this link if you want to skip ahead. For the rest of you who want to suck in all the data they can, watch this video explaining the things you'll need to get if you wish to build the rig to function. I'll be creating a playlist of the items you'll want to get as I start to build the rig myself. So if you're technically challenged like me, keep up so we can figure all of this out together. Now then, let's begin by getting some of the more superfluous elements out of the way, like the environmental factors needed for this rig's creation. Before anything else, I think it's about time we get some safety recommendations immediately out of the way, since being alive is a prerequisite to being able to enjoy the virtual reality rig design. For one, this rig is not capable of negating or counteracting your senses of hunger, thirst, pain, smell, taste, excretion, touch, itch, and thermoception in the least. So, while it should be obvious staying in a room with a comfortable temperature and being certain you're in an environment where you won't be infiltrated, are all highly advised that this rig will technically block you from much of the external inputs of sight and sound due to the nature of its parts, leaving the user extremely vulnerable under poor circumstances. Not to preach either, but using VR on an empty stomach while dehydrated or needing to use the bathroom should be just as bad on your experience as it is while doing any other type of activity. So do take care of that stuff as you might not be able to quickly gather a sock or a bottle with your face stuck in a helmet, though I pray you wouldn't do so in the beginning. Let's move on to the computing requirements for all of this. To be honest, there are no ironclad requirements to make all of this work besides having a large amount of USB ports available for usage, though I will advise that whatever setup you're using be able to handle the usage of many peripheral items simultaneously, at least two monitors, and running your VR software at the very least at 60 frames per second without dropping. If you can do that on an Intel HD or graphics card from 5 years ago, more power to you, though I recommend having a good amount of leeway in terms of power just to be safe. Finally, we can move on to the rig itself. The rig is composed primarily of two systems, the helmet and bands systems respectively. Optionally, I recommend an additional chair system to make certain parts of the rig easier to implement or add to the experience. With that, I'll list all the parts of each system and what we'd suggest you get in this regard. This is going to take a while, so if you wish to skip to a different part of the implementation, I'll be setting up the links in the description below in the video now. If you want to hear the helmet part list, click the top right link. If you want to know the bands parts, click the middle right link. Finally, if you wish to know about the suggested chair system, just wait as that will be coming up next. Good? Let's get started. The chair system is meant to be a significant part of the unifying aspect of this design and serves the purpose of tying the parts of this rig together and in the vestibular negation aspects of this rig. For this, we suggest that one obtain a chair that is composed of a comfortable material with support for the legs being a major requirement. Also, I would recommend that the chair have the ability to recline back to what is called the zero gravity or anti-gravity position for usage preferably with a remote operable system to tie into the software support systems, although manual operation prior to the beginning of a virtual reality session is fine as well. In terms of modifications to the chair, I suggest adding depressions or slots where the back of the head, arms just past the elbows, and legs just past the knees are, for the purpose of preparing docks for all the elements of the rig. I suggest magnetic locks strong enough to create a bit of tension but weak enough to not to damage your electronics or some simple velcro for the docks. Lastly, you may want to create a pocket for your hands to go in or a depression for your hands, or an area with noticeably different material to the rest of the chair. With that, we're done with what you'll want to do with your chair. Time for the helmet system. The helmet is the part of the design with the most parts running about, and therefore will be the most difficult to construct. I'll likely seek the services of a custom 3D printing service, or hand build my enclosure, but there are still some variables that have yet to be determined, so with that, I suggest holding off for a bit 
the time so that some of these elements can be released prior to beginning our construction. This helmet is composed of a mixture of different products that will in all likelihood be available within this year. The items required are a head mounted display, a pair of headphones, an array of vibration motors, an electroencephalogram, a microphone, electrooculogram, gyroscope accelerometer magnetometer combination, and an electromyogram. And an electromyogram. I'll be categorizing the parts in terms of their usage for input immersion and output detection. If you want to see a particular item, click on its listing to skip ahead. For the rest of you, we'll be moving in listing order, so let's go. For the first input immersion piece, we have a need for a head mounted display. I recommend the Oculus Rift's consumer version should it be released within this year. In the event that the Rift fails to launch within this year, a developer's edition from 2013 should be sufficient as an alternative, if a bit disappointing. Another potential alternative is to simply build your own Rift equivalent. For the best experience, however, having the qualities of the Rift would be optimal, particularly having the abilities of the most recently announced Crystal Cove development unit with the low persistent display and a higher resolution and similarly high field of view to the developer Rift or greater. Also, be wary of the distance from the user's eye to the display as it being too great will only further increase the difficulty and poor aesthetic appeal of the helmet. Headphones are another input immersion element to this rig. The primary requirement is the ability to simulate the direction of a sound, so most stereo or virtualized surround sounds headphones should do the trick under the right software circumstances. Having a headpiece that is removable or directly changeable via modification is suggested as it could interfere with the integration with the helmet enclosure. Lastly, a noise cancellation system of some form is heavily advised to help in blocking out external noise. While having a quiet environment is possible for some, in many cases this will not stay consistent and in case of those unwanted sounds coming in, noise cancellation should be able to prove a sufficient backup. An array of vibration motors is yet another input emergent element to this rig. At least six motors are needed for this implementation. The amount of vibration only needs to be enough to be noticeable to the head without inflicting pain or irritation. These should be placed at the internal front, upper top, sides, bottom, and back of the helmet system. An electroencephalogram is under the output detection categorization of this rig, though it's mainly intended for data collection purposes. Primarily, it's intended to gather data on the user's emotional state, focus, immersion, and other behavior while in virtual reality would be of great benefit, though it's optional in our practical implementation. In particular, I'm going to suggest the use of the upcoming Emotive Insight, as it's from a company that has been recognized in this field, covers the required needs, and doesn't require the use of saline solutions like the original Emotive Epoch. A microphone is needed for this rig and falls under the output detection categorization. It need only be cardioid in design, as there won't be a need for outside sound, and a pop filter being added or already installed will go a long way to helping get good sound clarity. The goal is to be able to accurately gather sounds of the voice, so if you know more on this end, do share so in the comments or on the Oculus VR general forum thread in the link below. Next up, I'll be grouping the electromyogram and electrooculogram together for this implementation, since the usage I have in mind would most efficiently be done by using them in tandem in one item for the sake of output detection. For the electrooculogram, all that is needed is the ability to detect whether or not the eye is moving left, right, or centered, with roughly two degrees of data in each area, though getting more than that into the hundreds of thousands would be excellent. The electromyogram, which will be placed on various points on the upper neck, could do with at least two decimal places in terms of values, without the need to significantly perform a large or great movement. A large or great movement. More exactly, without the ability to dislodge from a dock of the strength needed for the magnetic chair, with available rotation axes being rho, pitch, yaw, and the x, y, and z axis of directions available. Before we move on to the band system, I think it should be noted that while gyroscopes and accelerometers should not be needed if all goes as planned, in the event that someone cannot set up the electromyogram on the neck, or if one wishes to add additional fidelity to the neck measurements, they can come in handy, though sub-millimeter precision will be necessary on that front. That does it for the noteworthy requirements of the helmet system. Time to move on to the needs of the band system. The band system in truth is composed of only two real band types, 
a fitness band, and an electromyogram band. Thus, I'll tackle them very quickly in that order. Fitness meters that can be placed in the form of a wrist or arm band will require the ability to act as electrocardiograms to detect the heart rate of the user, with the ability to send this data to an external computer application being particularly useful. Optimally, usage for the detection of overall ability of muscles and degrees of strength or exertion through daily use measurements would be possible. Lastly, we've come to the need of an electromyogram band for the purposes of detecting subtle muscle data in the appendages, or rather four of them. The requirements are within at least three significant figures of rotational and vector axes and high-speed detections. For this, I'll directly cite the Mayo by Thalmic Labs, though that item is only designed for arm use and thus will either have to be jury-rigged for legs or simply won't work for legs at all. In that case, one may want to look into the Advanta Technologies Muscle Sensors version 3 or the Mayo Links by Silmaxis. With that, we've covered all the parts of this rig that can be predicted ahead of time. There will almost certainly be a need for a lot of cabling in the final rig, but the exact amount can't be calculated until all the parts are properly assembled. As said earlier, I'll report any items that are purchased for the sake of this rig to the channel, so if you wish to keep up to date with my progress on this, subscribe or bookmark the thread on Oculus VR in the description below to learn more. Now then, it's about time we got to the implementation of all of this in the rig itself and why it is that this rig matters so much to me as a concept. Click the link at the top right there to go now.